this video, I'm going to show you how to use online collections of text uh, to find useful linguistic information. These are texts that are, have been purposely designed uh, for you to explore um, linguistic patterns in English. Uh, to some extent, the use of Google, as I showed in the previous video, to do a little linguistic detective work is kind of using uh, Google as a corpus. Uh, as a source of online uh, text. But what I'll be showing you today are tools that have been used, have been created specifically for language exploration. You may be familiar with images like this. This is what is commonly known as a word cloud. And you notice that there are some words that are bigger than others on here. And if you kind of just have a glance at this, you can pretty much guess the source or the, the kind of text from which this image was derived. And it did come from this Wikipedia entry, Online Learning in Higher Education, which is probably pretty much what you guessed. And what you see in this image is that uh, basically the larger the word, the more common it was in the source text. And that's pretty much the basic idea behind the use of corpus tools. It's, uh, it's a lot to do with frequency, it's a lot to do with looking for patterns, especially frequency-driven patterns uh, in the text. And, and uh, very generally, the, the more volume of text you have, um, the, the more useful the information, although um, there are some caveats, which I'm going to talk about in, um, in a later video with regard to that. A corpus, there, therefore, is basically a collection of text. And corpus tools are electronic interfaces that help you find linguistic patterns in text. Uh, one of the linguistic tools I'll be talking about today, uh, the first one, is SKELL, which is Sketch Engine for Language Learning. Here is the, uh, the web address for that. So let's go there. If you don't go directly to the link that I showed you in the slide, you can just Google SKELL. Um, and the, sur the first link that you get usually when you type in SCAL um, is this one. That's what you should be looking at. And <clears throat> what you see here is a, a menu of options here at the top. Examples, words, sketch, similar words, more features, more languages. Um, so let's put in <clears throat> a, an academic word uh, like finding as a noun as in research findings. Um, and I'll look for that. And what is retrieved is, first of all, you see the word finding here, but we don't know if it's being used here as a, a verb or a noun. What we do see is um, its frequency per million, so uh, how often it occurs in the text that it's collected, which um, is in the millions for this corpus. and each of these lines here are act lines from actual um, authentic uh, material, different source texts that have been collected for this, uh, so the, for this corpus, so different source files. Uh, so here you have, and this can be useful just to find examples, uh, lots of examples beyond the typical dictionary examples that you might find in, in the dictionary, such as the, the, um, the One Look dictionary that I showed in another video. Uh, so here you see one early finding has immediate practical value. But then you see in number two, uh, here are five fresh local projects worth finding. And so here you have kind of a noun use, and here you have a verbal use. So what you can do is you click on, if you click on word sketch, here um, uh, finding is as a noun, and so the linguistic information here will be for specifically for a noun. And here you see, for example, verbs with the word finding as a subject. And you might think, well, that's not very useful. Well, actually, it can be, because what's here, going back, you go back to the concept of frequency. These words here, these verbs, are presented first in, in accordance with their frequency, so how they collocate remember we talked about the word collocation in a previous video, how commonly these words collocate with the word found, finding. And to check on, uh, to check what they mean by this is you can click on 
suggest. And then you can see the pattern that is being um, evinced in this um, that this the suggestion here of this um, collocation. So finding suggest this finding suggests money does not cause long term happiness. These findings suggest an increasing trend towards family disruption during childhood. Um, and you also have uh, verbs with finding as an object. So again, you can click on that. And so these findings are summarized in figure three. A tertiary source summarizes findings, etc. cetera. Uh, adjectives with finding, the most common one apparently is preliminary. The findings are preliminary. Task force cautions findings are preliminary. And uh, modifiers of finding. So, oops. Um, so apparently, research uh, finding is a common pattern. The research findings on particular works are constantly published. Our research findings put this trend into perspective. This chapter has presented my main, my main research findings, and so on. So that's the most common collocation with finding. And uh, modifiers of finding, nouns modified by finding, um, and other patterns that you can identify. So you can see how that can be useful uh, to help you identify collocation, which I mentioned in a previous video, can make your writing um, sound uh, more natural in the sense that uh, using the most formulaic, we talked about how uh, academic writing can be formulaic, most formulaic uses of academic terms and, um, and phraseology. You can also uh, look at uh, words that are similar. So you see that it does a little word cloud for you as well of these, syn of these synonyms. And uh, you find other other candidates that can be used um, uh, as an alternative if you want to uh, find something that not sounds so repetitive, which is a common problem when 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 is writing. And so I'll, I'll stop there with scale. I, I think scale is a pretty useful tool and a good example of uh, what is a corpus tool, how how one can use uh, corpus data. The next tool I'd like to show you is a, a bit of a, maybe not as user friendly um, a tool, but it, it can it can do more for you. Uh, and uh, this is something called word and phrase. It's based on a, a corpus called the COCA corpus, the corpus of contemporary American English. It's a huge corpus in the millions and millions and millions of words. And let me show you um, how that works. So if you just Google word and phrase, you usually get this as a top hit. And you're given two options. On the left here, frequency list, and on the right, input and analyze text. So let's start first with um, frequency list. OK, now here, I'm going to go ahead and just put in the word that uh, we used in the, the scale corpus example. And here you can see that I can select, since I don't want any verbs or adjectives or anything, or verbs, I guess, in this case, I only want the noun form of findings. I can click here, and that's what it gives me. But different from scale, it also shows me the frequency, the relative frequency, in different types of, of written language. So spoken, uh, different type of discourse, so spoken, fiction, magazine, newspaper, and academic. And as you can see here with this darkest blue, it means that it's the most common, which is also reflected down here in uh, the this bar chart, where you can see academic, the academic use of finding as a noun is by far the most common. And we'll come back to that in a second. Down here, you see findings, or finding, um, apparently it's mostly in, uh, especially common in its plural form. This, in the middle of this text, is what's called a, a quick concordance, so the keyword in context. And so it is the node word here 
And as a node word, you can see um, it's kind of patterning, it's lexical and grammatical patterning. So that alone is interesting, uh, it can be useful. But the examples, as you can see here on the side, are different things. You see spoken examples, and you see um, magazine examples. If I want to see only academic uh, corpus lines, I can just click on this bar chart here. And as you can see now, the, the genre has switched to own academic only. And uh, not only that, if I go to the left of the node word or to the right, I can see um, that the, the, these words that are in boxes, um, I can click on them. Uh, or in different colors, I can click on them. So if, if I click on the word promising here, I can see other examples of promising finding. Then go back. I can see other collocates here, though. Um, consistent previous. This is these are listed in order of frequency, so the most frequent first. And also, if I click on consistent with finding, um, again, it's only uh, here. It's a, a mix of genres, but mostly academics. So I can see the patterning of consistent, consistent finding the way it, it collocates the word consistent color case with the word finding. And uh, to the left here, it's given me very conveniently synonyms to be used with finding. And if I want to find out how to use those synonyms, I can just click on one of them, like conclusion. And uh, it gives me conclusion as a node word here, but if it's got a mixed bag of genres, if I only want academic, I can see just academic examples of the word conclusion as a synonym uh, to finding. Uh, also, word and phrase, uh, going back to the first screen that you saw, allows me to, um, as an option, input or analyze text. And that you're going to see how this can also be quite useful. So that article that I showed you earlier that drove the word cloud, uh, online learning and higher education, I can copy some text here and put it into um, word and phrase. I'm just going to copy that in. And then when I put in search here, in just a few seconds, it gives me what's called a lexical profile. And what this shows me is uh, basically how how complex this this text is because uh, here you see that sixty one percent of that text from the Wikipedia article is comprised of the 500 most common, the one to 500 range of the most common words in English. So that's the bulk of it. 20% is comprised of a range between five, uh, the, the words that feature in a frequency list between ranked 501 to 3000. So what you see is that a, a full 81% of the text is actually made up of common words, relatively common words in English. And then Above that range, there's 16%, which is maybe more specialized, less common words. OK. So what I can do is I can click on any word of, the, of these that are, um, well, actually, any word in this text. And I can see examples from COCA like we saw earlier. So let's say that in this range here, I'm not familiar with a lot of, a lot of these words you'll already be familiar with, familiarized with. And then maybe these here, less so. And let's so let's say for example I'm not sure with uh, sure about the word um, uh, learner or setting. And so similar to that first option that we saw with frequency list, I have a quick collocation here. I have genre information, and I can click on that. And I can see um, only academic 
uses of the of this word um, setting. And I can see uh, that the most common color kits of uh, setting is are urban in this order, urban, social, different, natural, and so on. And again, I can, I can click on these and and see lots of examples of that of of uh, of that collocation. Um, and so this is really good to do further exploration uh, and, and vocabulary development, actually. Uh, and it also it is also useful, uh, not with this text I put in, but if you grab your own text and put them in here, you can begin to develop um, specialized uh, vocabulary, more advanced vocabulary in, in this lower frequency range here. Um, that is specifically suited to your particular discipline, so um, uh, phrases uh, and terminology that you may not uh, otherwise notice or may not uh, be familiar with. Uh, furthermore, uh, the words that are in green here, which would represent sort of a mid-frequency range, uh, you might find that, hey, you know, there are some words here that I'm not familiar with, that are green that I feel I should know because uh, they're in that mid-frequency range. And uh, let's say you didn't know the word primarily, you can click on that and, uh, and start building uh, your vocabulary as well. And I can see that um, as a node word here. Yeah, I can click on it. Academic, it's the only academic if I want. Um, and I have the synonyms to the left, so you can see that largely, if you get tired of using the word primarily, you can uh, choose one of these here and, and see how frequent they are as well. And click on largely, for example, I see that it's also mostly academic. Okay, up here, last thing I'm going to show you is that you can also see lists. And so if I click on that, what I see here are um, in that text that you that I just inputted here, that Wikipedia text. I can see a breakdown of what these uh, what these words are. So if you want to, you know, make a vocabulary list for yourself of terminology, uh, and and see where they are in terms of uh, how Coca ranks them, the lower range, the the less frequent range is the this over three the, below the, the top 3,000 words you see um, there are eight examples of asynchronous seven examples in the text of learner so seven instances of, of learner seven e e instances of assist um, or interact or interaction synchronous and so on um, and you can also see Therefore, which ones are particularly common in a particular discipline? These here are words that only appear once, appeared once in the text. That doesn't mean that they're not necessarily uh, useful. But obviously, the ones that are the most frequent would be an indication that these are terms that would be used, that would be more important for you to learn in your particular discipline. Certainly, down here in the range two, which is the sort of midway mid range frequency, um, you would expect to to need to know these more frequent ones here, if you don't know them already. And um, down here, I mean, I would expect that anybody taking this course would, would know where it's in this frequency range for sure. Okay. So that pretty much does it in terms of an introduction to corpora and how to use ready-made corpora. Uh, those are tools that I hope you find useful in addition to the tools that have already been presented in this module. Uh, next, uh, I uh, will be talking about something I'm especially excited about that I find to be really the most useful of all, which is how to create uh, your own corpus or your own corpora collections of text and how to analyze those with text from your particular discipline. Mm -hmm.